Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. What really happened? Godfrey Stewart High School Administration says students were not barred from school. Lieutenant General Rocky Meade appointed Cabinet Secretary. And later in sports, Reggae Boys gets new coach. I'm Kalisha Williams and here are the details. The administration of the Godfrey Stewart High School in Westmoreland has doubled down on its uniform policy for students. It comes after dozens of students said they were barred from the institution on Monday for breaching the dress code. But as we hear in this report, the school is insisting the students were not barred. Reports that dozens of students were barred from the Godfrey Stewart High School in Westmoreland for wearing tight pants and skirts more than five inches above the ankle surprised many people. Some argued that these uniforms seemed fit for school. When our news center spoke with the chairman of the school, Neville Wilson, on Tuesday, he defended the school's uniform policy. Right now, we are in an environment that quite a number of our students are being... Um, violated and um, with some of the behaviors on public transport and all of that. So we're trying to put some thought into the process of making our students less vulnerable to these predators. But how would the length of a school uniform prevent someone from being attacked by predators? The big picture is if we, if we run a school without rules because of what persons think, what is going to happen is that we are going to be having more challenges. In As for concerns about barring the students from school, Mr. Wilson rejected those claims. He said the students were being processed in the school's parking lot and those who were found in breach were offered assistance by the Parent Teachers Association to get new uniforms. There were some parents who rejected because they don't, they, they don't want their children to be wearing such long uniforms. And... They will not accept because nothing is wrong with the students, their, their children's uniform. And as such, the, some of the parents decided to take it to the street. Mr. Wilson said upon hearing the chaos, some of the students left the parking lot to observe what was happening at the school gate. He further stated that all students were later permitted to attend classes. However, some decided to leave with their parents. We agree that we are going to have some, some sessions with these students who they are parents who are unwilling to conform and to see how best we can move forward. Lieutenant General R Rocky Meade has been appointed Cabinet Secretary and Head of the Public Service. He will succeed Ambassador Douglas Saunders, who leaves the post on October 1. Ambassador Saunders has been Cabinet Secretary and Head of the Public Service since June 2008. In making the announcement, Prime Minister Andrew Holness indicated that Lieutenant Meade's years of experience in government will be an asset to the public service and a crucial part of the thrust towards efficiency and service excellence. Mr. Holness also thanked outgoing Cabinet Secretary Ambassador Saunders for his decades of service. In responding to his appointment, Lieutenant Meade said he's humbled and honored to be considered for the post and pledged to further the positive evolution of the public service. The two major political parties have responded to the R.J. Aguina commissioned Don Anderson poll on party standings. The poll shows that more persons would vote for the Jamaica Labour Party than for the People's National Party in an election. Representatives of both parties have been given, have given contrasting reactions to the ratings. The JLP says it's pleased with the findings because it shows strength despite difficult economic times while the PNP has expressed the view that it is recovering and will continue to grow in popularity. 31% of those interviewed said they would vote for the governing JLP and 18% for the PNP. 34% of respondents said they would not vote, while 17% are not sure. Public Relations Chairman of the JLP, Robert Morgan, 
argues that the party has faced several external challenges but managed to remain popular. He accepts the results as a sign of the public's confidence in the party. We have seen the numbers. Um, we recognize that we continue to be ahead of the opposition. And this is in the context of a pandemic. This is the context of a global logistics challenge, context of global inflationary pressures that have really put up been stressful to Jamaican people. But I think the people in Jamaica have recognized the efforts of the government. I won't say I'm happy with the, the undecided and those who say they won't vote. And that's something that I think us as a country, as political organizations, need to work harder at. But we're very happy with the polling results. And we just need to look at them and look at what the criticisms are that the people have levied against us as to why it is that they do not support and try to find ways to reassure them and to fix some of the challenges that we have. In the meantime, Deputy Chairman of the PNP, Dr. Floyd Morris, argues that the results represent the mood of the people at a specific point in time and this can change. He believes the party is already changing for the better. So we are working on a document that is going to be charting the course for the party um, over the next couple of years. And the, the delegates of the conference will be engaged in an intense, intense discussion and debate on the, the document, which these are indications that, that the party has been recovering. And, uh, I mean, we are going to demonstrate that further uh, come uh, Sunday, and then after that we will continue to intensify our work by bringing the message to the Jamaican people. O'Shea Masters, TVJ News. And the People's National Party is increasing the pressure on the Andrew Holness-led administration for its handling of the crime situation in the country. As you hear in this report from Dwayne Anderson, representatives of the PNP's sister party from one Eastern Caribbean country have joined those criticizing the Prime Minister. There can only be one person wearing the captain's armband. There can only be one striker wearing number 10. You can't burn down the party to rule the ashes. The assassin never becomes the king. Camilo Gonzalez, the Minister of Finance in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, with words of advice to PNP members and supporters about the importance of unity if the PNP is to return to power in Jamaica. It comes amid more discontentment among party members, including those in Westmoreland who expressed concern publicly over the election of members at the divisional and constituency levels. Mr. Gonzalez, who was a guest speaker at Sunday's PNP meeting that that kick-started the week of activities to mark the party's anniversary also spoke of the benefits of state intervention at a time when global supply issues and COVID are driving inflation. In our country, when the gas prices began to rise, we took a, a page from Mark's suggestions to cushion the crisis. So we got rid of taxes on fuel and petrol, and now we have the cheapest gas anywhere in the Eastern Caribbean. The St. Vincent and the Grenadines parliamentarian also took aim at Jamaica's Prime Minister Andrew Holness for his handling of crime in Jamaica. About crime and sleeping with your windows open at night. I wouldn't do that. Because I would be out of place. And who feels it? And who feels it? It's why the PNP is again calling for the country's two top crime fighting leaders to be replaced. If him not do nothing about it, uh, him we are going to call for next. Yes, because we tell him to move national security, him don't do nothing. 91 percent, 90 how much percent of Jamaicans say, 93 percent of Jamaicans say that Horace Chang needs to go in the yard, that the police, the commissioner of police not doing nothing and holding, holding still have them there. When is he going to send them home? Sandy Williams, TVJ News. 
Continuing the news now, in St. Mary, the number of motor vehicle crashes this year has increased to 436 with four fatalities. Superintendent Bobbitt Morgan Simpson says for the same period last year, there were 407 motor vehicle deaths. She believes this is an indication that drivers need to be more careful on the roads. She was speaking at the monthly municipal corporation meeting in the parish. And uh, let me just say that in the whole scheme of things, we are finding guns in St. Mary as well. Last one was found in early August in the Anato Bay space. So don't believe that there are no guns in St. Mary. There are guns in St. Mary. Most of the, 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 the murders and shoot and murder, murders that have taken place, they are with the use of the guns. And we have been having the shootings. Up to recently in Highgate, we had a double shooting. A major water shortage in and around St. James is being blamed for the increase in the Aedes aegypti index in the parish. According to Acting Public Health Inspector for the parish, Sharika Lewis, the index jumped to 17% in August. That's up 7% from July's index. Ms. Lewis made the announcement at the latest meeting of the St. James Municipal Corporation. For this period, 3,742 premises were inspected and 644 were found to be positive for mosquito breeding. 10,000 containers were inspected and 1,800 were found to be positive for mosquito breeding. Ms. Lewis says a number of intervention methods have been employed to include an increase in fogging of communities and sensitization. In the meantime, the health team says while there has been an increase in the index, there has not been any confirmed cases of dengue in the parish. There have, however, been several suspected cases. And it's now time for the Business Minute with Cody and Barrett. The Business Minute. Brought you by In need of a loan? In Financial is the place to go. We have loans from $20,000 to $3.3 million. More than 1,000 cannabis industry stakeholders are expected in Montego Bay this week for CanEx Jamaica, the cannabis conference and expo, to discuss how to cash in on the ganja plant. CanEx organizer Douglas Gordon says the cannabis industry represents an opportunity to improve the lives of many Jamaicans. The industry has been facing many challenges, including an unclear export policy, rejection by the banking sector, mistrust, and misunderstanding by the public and government and the softening of the global market. And in business internationally, payment processor Visa Inc. on Saturday announced that it plans to start separately categorizing sales at gun shops, a major win for gun control advocates who say it will help better track suspicious surges of gun sales that could be a prelude to a mass shooting. But the decision by Visa will likely anger gun rights advocates and gun lobbyists who have argued that categorizing gun sales would unfairly flag an industry when most sales do not lead to mass shootings. It joins MasterCard and American Express, which also said they plan to move forward with categorizing gun shop sales. That's it for the Business Minute. I'm Cody Ann Barrett. The Business Minute, brought to you by... In need of a loan? In Financial is the place to go. We have loans from $20,000 to $3.3 million. It's now time for our regional and international stories. Here's Sandy Williams. In the region, Barbados Environment and National Beautification Minister Adrian Ford is drawing a parallel between illegal dumping at sea and the heavy use of pesticides in fields across the island. Ford addressing the launch of the Barbados International Coastal Cleanup, hosted by the Caribbean Youth Environment Network, drew linkages between the influx of sargassum weed on the island's south and east coasts and illegal dumping and the use of chemicals. He told the audience that sargassum seaweed should be regarded as the perennial grinch that comes every year, not only as a result of increased temperatures because of climate change, but because of the anthropogenic behaviors of the people. On the international scene, 
thousands of nurses across Minnesota are now on strike. It's believed to be the largest private sector nurse strike in U.S. history. The nurses want to see higher staffing levels and higher pay. There is an enormous gap in what the nurses want and what the hospitals are offering. The nurses are asking for a 30% pay increase over three years. The hospitals are offering 12% over three years. Nurses say they would be willing to reduce their pay hike request if hospitals agreed to their most important demand, better staffing. And those were the top regional and international stories. I'm Sandy Williams. And that's the Midday News. I'm Kalisha Williams. Join us at 7 for primetime news. On behalf of the news, sports and production teams, good afternoon.